David Menzies for Rebel News here at Toronto's Walter Saunders Memorial Park. Well, folks, I'm here because recently the Toronto Police Service held a press conference in which they were announcing charges against a 33-year-old woman, Ruby Ebby. And uh, Miss Ebby is charged with sexual interference with a person under 16 and sexual assault. And that sexual assault, that alleged sexual assault, that is, took place right here at this park on May the 20th, and it involved a six-year-old boy. Now, right off the hopper, things didn't seem right to me. I mean, this is extremely unusual that a mature woman would sexually assault a minor. And then things began to become that much clearer. Folks, I want you to check out the photograph of 33-year-old Miss Ruby Ebby. I'm sorry, but in this gender utopia that we live in, sometimes you got to call it as you see it. And Ruby is not a she, it's a he. It's an obvious man. Well, I reached out to the Toronto Police Service to question them why this person is being considered a female as opposed to a male. And my response from police uh, communications was the following, quote, Ruby Ebby identifies as a woman. The Toronto Police Service recognizes that people have the right to identify by their choice and respect this decision, end quote. Now, this is doubly troubling, folks, because if indeed this person is being considered a woman, albeit biologically male, then that will, of course, mean that this person, if found guilty, serve his time in a female correctional institution. You may recall how last month we went out and covered a protest about that in Kitchener. It is penal policy right now that biological males, simply for stating that they are female, can do time with female prisoners. And that creates a dangerous condition for the biological females. How is it that we ever got to this point? How is it that we have allowed madness to reign? How is it that we are bending the knee constantly to radical transgender ideology to the expense of public safety? It's a disgrace and it has to end. Gross. That's the only word that comes to mind when I reflect upon the sordid story of Ruby Ebby. But riddle me this, what is more grotesque, the fact that Mr. Ebby is gaming the system, presumably on the basis that if he is indeed found guilty, he shall do his time at a female prison? Or do you have more contempt for those in charge, woke nutcases who are bending the knee to this sort of transgender extremism crap, simply out of the fear of being labeled transphobic? Well, you had a lot to say about Ruby Ebby. And while this individual has not been convicted of any of the sex crimes he was charged with, one thing is certain, this dude is most certainly a con man supreme. Barbara Sherman writes, it's dangerous to lie about a sex offender's actual sex. An accurate description is vital. And why is society agreeing to lie on behalf of sex offenders? Why give them one single bit of validation when they are the worst of the worst? Over 90% of sex offenders are male, and they're now saying they identify as women so they can get transferred to a woman's prison. There they re-traumatize the woman, almost all of whom are already victims of sexual assault. Our society is sick. Well, Barbara, I couldn't have said it better myself. And by the way, guess who we have to thank for this perverse policy of men being able to transfer into women's prisons? Well, it's none other than Justin Trudeau. He got the ball rolling on this perversity four years ago. Yeah, some feminist, eh? L. Estee writes, 
One of our kids allegedly is sexually assaulted, but we dare not offend Ruby. This is sickening. You got it, LSD, misgendering someone, even a creep like Ruby. Well, that's considered an unforgivable crime by Team Woke. Gee, they really have their priorities straight, don't they? Catherine Chayara writes, any woman who supports or is an ally to a biological male identifying as female and is okay with him, her molesting a six-year-old is a disgrace to her womanhood. The, er the early feminists did not sacrifice blood, sweat, and tears for this madness. Great reporting, David, as always. Comforting to know that there are still real men out there protecting sanity. Well, Catherine, first of all, thanks for the kind words. As for the feminist movement, it is spectacular to me that they are sitting this one out. Today's far left woke feminists are actually throwing real women under the bus when it comes to radical transgenderism. It's baffling. Lava 1964 writes, how is it that we got to this point? Simple, the good people did not nip it in the bud. We assumed that this nonsense would never become the law. Now that it's gained a foothold, it's irreversible. Actually, Lava 1964, I disagree that this madness is irreversible. All we need is some courageous men and women in power to do the right thing and take a stand against these radical transgender activists. They seem to be AWOL now, but hope as always abounds that someone will do the right thing and reverse this grotesque nonsense in the future. Hey folks, that was an excerpt from my show, Rebel Roundup. Now, to get the full meal deal, why not go to Rebel News Plus, sign up, and never miss a Rebel News Plus show in the future.